Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be, wherever you are, wherever you're listening to this. I will be reading a new book today called Sam and the Flower. Please enjoy this rendition. At the bottom of the earth, there is a place called Antarctica. No humans live there. There are no cars or stores or even chocolate bars. There is, however, lots of ice and thousands of penguins. Not long ago, one young penguin named Sam was enjoying a particularly warm summer by going for a stroll on the beach. Of course, the only thing which makes a warm summer different from a cold summer in Antarctica is that there is a little less ice around than usual, and more of the rocky shore shows through. This is fine by Sam, as he both liked to play on the ice with his brothers and to walk alone in the beach. You would like to walk alone too, if you live with 7,812 of your relatives. However, this particular promenade along Lonely Beach, as Sam called it, was to be special. When he had walked very far and was starting to get tired, Sam headed for his favorite sitting rock. The rock was there as usual, but just past it on the beach, Sam saw something amazing. It was the most beautiful creature he had ever seen. Not black and white like a penguin or blue and gray like rocks and ice, but bright green and pink and orange. Sam had never seen another living thing like it, and he had no idea what it was or where it had come from. He wanted terribly to go over and introduce himself, but he was too embarrassed to talk to it when he didn't even know what it was. It was then that he decided to go and talk to the wisest creature he knew, the iceberg. The iceberg lived alone far out at sea, but he was a very kind creature and he liked the penguins very much. Often he swam into shore and let the little birds jump and slide off and into the water. He was not far from the beach that day and Sam swam out to him and he climbed onto the nearby piece of ice. Oh, Iceberg, you must help me, for I think I am in love, and I don't even know with what. The Iceberg was understandably confused, so he had the penguin explain. After he had heard all the details, he said, Well, Sam, she sounds like a lovely creature, but I don't think I can help you. I have floated close to other lands and seen many beautiful colors, but I never get close enough to know what they are. Unfortunately, I think only the birds could help you, and they've all gone fishing except Squawk, and I hear he's in a frightful mood. Sam thanked the iceberg for his help and swam off towards shore. He decided to go see the old seagull, grumpy or not. He simply had to learn more before he went back to Lonely Beach. When he got to Seagull's Ledge, he found that Squawk was the only bird there. In fact, Squawk's wife was forcing him to stay with the nest while she went to visit her mother, and since he would rather be fishing with his friends, he was very unhappy indeed. Sam looked up at the ledge, since it didn't seem like he was likely to be invited up, and said as respectfully as he could, Mr. Squawk, sir, I know that you have traveled far and seen many things. Perhaps you are the most knowledgeable bird in Antarctica and it is for this reason that I have come to you. Squawk was pleased that someone was giving him the respect he felt he deserved, and though he was still in a bad mood, he said, Well, what do you want to know? And be quick about it. I'm very busy, you know. Sam happily answered, I have seen an exotic beauty. She has only six feathers, but they are colored more beautifully than anything in the world. She has a bright, shining face, and a delicate, slender body of hue like the sea when the light is just so. She's not even a penguin, a seal, a bird, or anything that I have ever seen. What is she, Mr. Squawk? Squawk was not impressed with Sam's description, and it was also much too long and boring for Squawk's taste. This put him fully in a nasty mood again, so he said, I've seen hundreds of creatures like that, and more colors too. They're called flowers, and they live on lands far away, where there are grasses and trees and people. I don't know what she's doing here. Sam was puzzled. What are people? 
The bird was now bored with this, so he quickly replied, People are what live all over the world, and even in the boats that we sometimes see, like the one that is offshore right now. Now go away. Sam considered going to introduce himself to the flower, but he was afraid of sounding foolish unless he had learned more about people. He decided to go talk to his best friend. Now, Sam's best friend was not a penguin. True, he had many penguin friends, and there was one named Eleanor who was rather sweet on him. But when you live with thousands of others who look how you look, eat what you eat, and do what you do, it is often nice to have a friend who is a little different. Sam's best friend was Sherman, the whale. Sam swam out to Sherman and crawled onto his back. When they first met, Sam had been a bit afraid to get too close, but he soon learned that Sherman was a gentle and kind, and also vegetarian. So now, Sam lay, looking into the sky and discussing the flower. Tell me more about people so that I won't sound foolish to her, Sherman. Sherman was always happy to talk with his little buddy. He said, I don't really think she'll want to talk much about people. They don't mix much with other creatures, except to push them around. They're messy and nasty and not a polite conversation topic in most cases. Why, right now, one of their stinky boats is sinking not far from here. They don't even know how to run their own toys. It will cause all sorts of oil and garbage and other awful things to be washed up on shore. Let's talk about something nicer. Tell me all about this flower. Sam started to joyfully describe all the events of that morning. He was rather hurt when he noticed that his friend seemed distracted, until Sherman finally spoke up. Where exactly is she, Sam? he asked. Sam described her location more precisely, but Sherman already knew where Sam's sitting rock was. Oh no, wailed Sherman. This is where that boat is going down. If she doesn't move, she'll be smothered in oil and garbage. Before Sherman can blink, Sam had jumped into the water and headed for Lonely Beach. Flower, flower, I know we haven't been properly introduced, but you must move. A people boat is sinking, and this beach will be ruined. You can come and stay with my family if you like, but you must leave right away. To Sam's surprise, the flower didn't move. Instead, she only bowed her head and sighed. After a moment, she said in a soft voice, It was so kind of you to come and offer to help, but I cannot move. I am a flower, and we choose one spot and live there all our lives. This is my spot. The penguin sat next to the flower, and he felt heavy inside. She thought he looked very sweet, and so she spoke. Don't be so sad. My mother lived near people, and she hated the smelly air, the noise, and all the other unpleasant things people make. She decided to put her seeds into the sea so that her children might live in a better place, and I have. Are seeds very much like eggs? asked the little bird. Yes, in a way, I suppose they are, she said. By the way, my name is Sam. They talked and talked about their lives, their favorite things, the beautiful sun, and everything under it until finally Sam had to go home to bed. Don't forget me, Sam, she said, and Sam promised that he never would. The next day, Sam returned with hope, but what he saw was more horrible than he could possibly have imagined. The beach was covered in an awful mess, and there was no sign of the flower anywhere. He couldn't help himself. He sat on his rock and cried until he thought his heart would break. Years later, Sam still went to visit Lonely Beach often, only now he seldom walked alone. He had eventually married Eleanor, and they'd like to walk holding flippers while their children made sure the beach stayed clean. Eleanor knew all about the flower, and she didn't mind at all that Sam never did forget. <laughs>